So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to click on support, which will bring us over to our help center. Now, on the back of uh, the radios, I'm going to show you both radios right now. You'll notice inside here, so this is the UV2+, Plus. hopefully it can focus. Let's see, uh, well, in the label right over here, it says ATD UV2+, Plus. there kind of is focusing a little bit. It says UVII+. Plus. And this one says the AT8878 uh, UV+. Plus. Oops, sorry. Let's get it in screen a little bit. Can we get that in focus? There we go. Oop, had it. So one of them says the UV2, one of them says the UV+. Plus. So um, if you have the UV2, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come over here and click on this one right here, the first one. What this is going to do is this is going to bring us over to our page. 2.05 is our current version for UV2 plus or the UV2. So what we're going to do is we click on this first link and it will download. Now I'm going to download this and I'm going to download the other one. Now, if you clicked on this one and you have the UV1, let me hide myself real quick. You'll notice on the left-hand side here, we have our 878, the 578 version twos. And then right underneath that, we have our 878 version one. So we're gonna click on that and that's gonna bring up our CPS and firmware versions for the 878 UV one. So the UV and the UV plus. So we're gonna click here and our current version is 1.27. So we could click that right here and this will automatically download for you. Now, what I'm going to do is I already have one downloaded. It's the same for both. I'm going to bring up this window right here. And what I'm going to do is now that I have these downloaded, I'm going to right click on one of these. I'm going to go extract all. You do not need to get a third party extractor. You do not need WinZip. You do not need 7-Zip. You do not need WinRAR. You don't need any of these um, programs out there. You can actually, Windows has it built in. All you got to do is click on extract all. It's going to do it through its, uh, the Windows Explorer. We're going to click Extract All or Extract here. And you're going to notice another window will pop up. Oop, sorry, that you might not have seen that. It was an Extract window right here. And when I clicked Extract All, it may have brought up this window. Now in here, we have a bunch of folders. Let's start here at the top. Right here is gonna be all your manuals that's gonna teach you. You got uh, the user manual here, the Bluetooth guide, our change logs for the CPS, baseband update. So if you're having some issues, how to do firmware update. If there is an icon update issued with it, here's how to perform the icon update, how to use our JSON to CSV tool. Um, and then we have the virtual driver installation. So these are all guides that will help you. Now we're gonna come back here. And one of the things we're gonna actually do today is we're actually gonna go over how to add one of these screens to your radio. Um, let's see. So now when we come here, what we are gonna do is you can actually open up your CPS folder if you haven't already done so, double click this going to bring up a window that says, are you, you know, are you sure you want to install it? Uh, give me a second. Uh, so if you guys, oh, you guys can probably see that window. Okay. Just making sure. So you're going to click more run anyways. You'll get the window that says, do you want to install this? Yes. And we'll get this. Now, if you get this screen right away where it goes straight, give me a second, let me put that in the window. If you get this where it goes straight to create desktop shortcut, uh, that means that you already got a previous version like 2.04 in or an existing 2.05 installed. Or the same thing with 1.27, it could be you have a 1.27 or 1.26 already installed. So it's not gonna give you the option to choose where to download. Uh, one thing I will suggest 
check to make sure if you don't, if it does give you the location where to download that it's not installing to your D drive unless that is where you want it to install. So that is one thing that will uh, happen. And a lot of people have errors afterwards because it installs to the D drive and there is no D drive or their D drive is not mountable because it's a backup drive or something and uh, it can cause some issues. So let's just make sure you guys don't rush through the process. We check to make sure we're in the C drive and, and you go from there. Now, once the, it's already, in, I have it already installed. So once it's installed, you'll get a, some kind of screen like this. Now, uh, this one is a brand new CPS and uh, thing. As you can see up at the top, it says new. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the radio from yesterday that we, we uh, set up for Simplex and I'm gonna read from that radio. Now, first things first, we're gonna come over here, check our COM port. Now I know it's COM5, so we're gonna go there and we're gonna do a read from radio. No need to save because that's just the default configuration. Now, a lot of questions I get when I'm helping individuals is the digital contact list, do I need to download it? No, you do not need to download it from your radio unless you wanna have it backed up in, in that CPS for your radio specifically, uh, in that, the code plug, sorry. Uh, you can always download it from radioid.net, get a new one, a fresh one. So as long as you have an internet connection, there's no need to download your digital contact list. I always just do other data. Now, when reading other data, what this is going to do is this is going to do a few things. Now, if you notice at the top here, it changed. Uh, sorry, let me close that real quick. If you notice at the top, my top bar got a lot longer. <clears throat> what happened was is that when I got the original configuration, it was in commercial European mode. That's where the code plug was configured. So if I was to create a code plug and then write it to my radio, I would have got a band air. Now to prevent this band air, we read from the radio. That was this first step here. Now, as you can see, there's two simplex channels that we created right here and wrote into the radio from yesterday's stream. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to come up here and we're gonna go tools. Standby picture one. We're going to go open. Now let's see, desktop 878. I saved mine to the desktop. Most people save them to their downloads uh, and extract them in there. I extracted it on my desktop. So just know where you extract it so you can access the files. We're going to come over to the 878 screen here. And we're actually just going to choose, let's just choose this one. This looks kind of interesting. Picture, okay. Now we're going to go right. Right, data complete. So now that picture has just been written to my radio. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over to optional settings. Display, I think it is. Where was it? There's a setting in here somewhere where I just got to find it real quick. There we go. Standby background picture. It's on default. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to custom one since we uploaded it to custom one and we're going to hit okay. But as this is a brand new radio, there are a few other changes I do want to make. I do not like that it turns off after five seconds. I like my display to always be on. So I come over here and I go to always. Now I'm not going to mess with all the colors, but there is one last thing I always tell people to check before writing to their radio is on key functions. Now, one thing that happens to a lot of people is you will actually get locked out or your radio will lock up um, due to these four options right here. As you can see, three of them are on. The key knob lock, 
the keyboard lock, and the side key lock. We want to disable all three of these. Actually, want to make sure also force key lock is also disabled. But as of right now, since only three of these are on, we're going to make sure that they're all off. We're going to hit OK. And we are going to write to radio. Give me a second while that finishes. Okay, it's booting. And as you guys now can see, my background has that background that we chose. Alrighty, so let's go back now. And let's see. Was it in here? Boot image. Okay, so we're gonna come down to boot image now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a different image. And if we come down in here, here we go. Let's select this image. Picture OK. Now you can make your own custom boot images and all of that. Uh, let me hook this back up to the radio. You, you can make your own custom images. So if you want to have a logo of yours, or you have your company logo, or you have your amateur club, radio club, or you made a QSO card for yourself or something, uh, you know, you can put all of these available onto the radio itself directly. Oh, my bad. I uploaded the image, but I forgot to enable it. I actually need to come to optional settings. Under optional settings, we are going to have, where is it? Right here. Power on interface, we want to make sure we select custom picture. See, even we forget steps sometimes. Let's write to the radio again. Now, if you guys are liking what we're doing and all these videos that we're providing for you, make sure you guys do like and subscribe down below. Uh, it does let us know that you do like it. it. It helps me out too. I'm trying to provide you guys with some amazing content. And, uh, you know, we go off of what you guys request a lot of times. So if you also have any uh, thing you would like to, us to do or any show ideas, please let us know. Now, I'm going to reboot the radio here again. Let me pull up my screen full. All right, booting. Starting service, as you guys can see, there's the image we selected. It goes right into that. Now you have just customized your radio a little bit to make it more personalized. 